So Eric Brunetti had some very choice words to say about one Virgil Abloh and you know um, from watching some of my videos that we are the number one Virgil Abloh defence squad. I think there are a lot of ills, a lot of misgivings that I could personally have that I could point towards Virgil from my time spent working uh, from afar with him. But I think overall he's probably done more good than bad for us as a community and for us as a scene. And I think, yeah, again, it's really difficult for the person that's first to kind of burst through that door, right? He's kind of been the first person to kind of break through the door and make the jump from streetwear to high luck for to like to you know to luxury streetwear to then to you know fashion. And he's done it pretty well, right? And he's kind of along the way, he's you know, he hasn't abandoned his roots, he's brought people through. He's surrounded himself by people who are much, you know, better than him or who have more experience than him. He's plucked kids out from obscurity. He's done everything that he can do within his power to really help people out with his quote unquote platform. And you can't, you know, you can't begrudge the guy, right? So I don't I tend not to kind of focus on the ills of him. I think in general, you know, if you're doing and you're trying to make some change, you're trying to push the culture forward you're trying to contribute something i think you 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 do deserve a, a lot more praise than people out there who are always kind of naysayers and you know speaking ill of the man but of course common criticism has to come in you know you have to, to criticism you have to take criticism when it comes to this different guys in different forms right when it comes from people who are storied and have a history in the game you have to take some attention to it you have to kind of pay attention to what they're saying even though what you, they're saying you might not like there might be some credence to it. And that is what we come to Eric Brunetti from Fucked, um, the OG streetwear brand in a similar vein as a Fresh Drive, similar vein as a Stussy. They've been around from the get-go. And he kind of had a he had a really enlightening interview with Gen Chem magazine um, where he kind of talks through his kind of, you know, his impact on the scene and streetwear overall. It's a fairly lengthy interview, but the, I'll concentrate on a bit that says that talks about Virgil, which is towards the bottom. Um, some really good pictures here of him in his home studio uh, talking about everything fucked concerned let's see if I can find it actually where is it da, 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 da. scroll down scroll down let's just do this find it oops uh, there we go so this is the bit that he talks about Virgil about right uh, da, 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 da. so the interview asks the following this is on Jenkins Magazine I'll link it in the show notes if you're just listening don't worry you can check out yourself um, you do, so the interview asked him, um, you don't like Virgil Abloh of, 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 of white, right? I remember seeing you post things about them on Instagram. It's not that I don't dislike him. He's probably an extremely nice person. I don't really respect his brand due to the fact that it's not created organically. It's sort of a fabricated based on who, on him being associated to Kanye West. If Virgil was not friends with Kanye West, would his brand have minor success? I'd argue no. Absolutely not. His success is by association. It's not by hard work and it's by no means organic. Okay, so, of course, you know, everyone's entitled to opinion. It's fine. I think he comes from it from an outsider's perspective. He's not He's not the cool streetwear dude, right? He's kind of segregated himself and pulled away from the scene overall. He just puts out dope products, puts out dope imagery and just lets his brand speak for himself for the most part. But he's known to be a little bit cranky in general anyway from the interviews I've read of his previously to stuff I used to see him post on social. I know he's kind of a, a very abrasive kind of straight in your in your face and tells it as, as it is kind of dude. So some of the things he's saying, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. But I think the criticism pointed towards Virgil here is probably a little bit off after Mark. I think when some people re uh, criticize Virgil for not being original, I think that's fair, right? I think so, there are some genuine arguments that could be put out there regarding his references and how he references and the ideas that he takes and reappropriates into his own designs. But he's also been quite forward and, and being quite honest and saying that he doesn't see it as a big issue as most people do right he knows what he's doing he's referencing stuff and he doesn't really think any idea is original all ideas are influenced by other ideas so what he's essentially doing is adding his little influence his little free what is it it's three percent a design tool right he makes a little tweak on things by three percent that's his kind of uh the design premise so that's what he basically does right whether or not you agree with that or not is your choice but i think that's a valid criticism to criticize him and say that he's only successful because of kanye is also i think it's not valid because i think in the beginning when he was first getting his you know i think when when it first came to when it first when it was first known that he was Kanye's creative director, when I don't think we were that aware prior what creative director did or what who they or what their position they played, but when he started to rise in prominence, he started to become a bit you know had to gain in notoriety, and he started to do his own projects and started to have his own interviews and was doing his own thing, whether it was prior to Bintrill or the Pirate Vision stuff. 
I think that was a fair criticism then, right? Because there was there wasn't enough time period in between for you to make an, any other judgment. But I think now enough time has elapsed, right? He probably hasn't worked directly or has sat alongside or earned a living or was paid a salary by Kanye for a while now, right? It might be five plus years or maybe longer since he's kind of done that. He's steered his own path. He's taken his brand to a level I didn't think he'd be able to go to, especially if you remember the first debut off White Show. It was fairly haphazard. It didn't look that great. It looked very amateurish. But so far, he's been able to kind of surpass anyone else's expectations by really, really ramping up his learn his knowledge curve and he's really um, essentially been able to grow his brand exponentially in the space of five years to what a brand should be maybe in 10 years, right? He's really grown it in the crazy sense of the word. And I think enough time has elapsed between Pyrex and Bintry and all that stuff and the Kanye Association to now that you can't say he's there solely on Kanye's um, association. If anything, the Kanye Association might be a bit of an ex, a bit might be might do the opposite for him, right? Because Kanye's reputation in fashion or the way he's viewed in fashion isn't as favorable as some people would like it to be, right? Fashion in general is quite, you know, clicky. Um, they're a bit nasty when it comes to people coming out from the outside anyway. So it wouldn't surprise me a lot of people didn't actually have to love time for Kanye. And by default, didn't have a lot of time for Virgil too. But I think over time with his success and his, you know, obvious clout, people have now, you know, I've, I've seen it myself because I know what those conversations were like when I was trying to book um, teachers or book lecturers or book brands to kind of sit alongside Virgil or have their name associated with him. I know how fucked, I know how uh, disrespectful they were to him or what they said or their reluctance to be associated with him. And now those very same people are now doubling back and trying to pretend, make believe that they were best friends, right? So that is, I don't think that was the case because if anything, it would have done the opposite. Um, so I don't think that's a real, real uh, marquee on the thing. It is... Did his association with Kanye West play some role in his success? Yes, that's that's obvious, right? I think with I think there was a report I mentioned here on this show actually. Um, I think they were analyzing the art world and they said one of the main predictors of succeeding in the contemporary art world is your network, of course, which makes complete sense because you know the contemporary art world is maybe quite similar to brands, right? There's not that many. St- galleries right or there's not many galleries of real big influence right that can really sway or dictate the flow or the trends or what's going on in the scene so once you're represented by those kind of galleries and you've got that cosign you're basically set right or your network right who you surround yourself with what parties are you in who you sat next to we all know those you know those famous pictures we see online of pictures of people that used to be at studio 54 and it's like michael jackson it's like uh, grace jones it's i don't know some rather random person, right? There's those amazing pictures that we see. We're like, shit, it's amazing. All those cool people in one place, right? That's the that's the marquee of being a success, right? It's getting yourself in those rooms. You just want to be in those rooms around people because then you know you're in the right network. So that has a lot to do with your success, I'd imagine, in any field. So if if Kanye did play a role, it was a uh, that stamp of like, okay, he's considered a cool guy because he's around this cool guy around other cool guys, right? That's that's about as far as it can go. I think clothing a lot like comedy. A lot like most things in life, that association, that coastline can only take you so far. If your work ain't good, right? If you if your work's not good, you're just gonna get, you know, no one's gonna give a shit about it. So I think over time, I think he's proved, especially with a Nike collaboration, I think he doesn't get as much praise as he should do. I think I met, I think I heard him speak about it in interviews all once that that Nike collaboration was a risky move from Virgil, right? Because it came quite soon in his into his career. He was given a monumental project of designing ten sneakers, right? Which is a crazy amount of sneakers to kind of design even if you just change the fucking color it's a lot of shoes to kind of get through um anyone that's ummed and odd about making one design on nike id would know how daunting of a task it must be to design 10 different silhouettes right um crazy and it was a bit of a risky decision because if that would have went wrong especially knowing how you know um knowing how uh vocal of their displeasure sneakerheads are and people in the scene street where people are in general if that wouldn't have worked out people would have crucified him but i think the fact that he aced it out of the park he you know adopted some really cool color in some of the shoes the the design element of it really helped but again that was a really really risky move and that again can't be a kanye thing because kanye is a bit you know he's a competitor right with his easy thing and he kind of you know publicly shamed nike because of their reluctance to give him a contract right so there's loads of things that were really in his favor being associated with kanye so i don't really think that's true but let's continue on um what else does eric Prudenti say here he says um what are the things that newer skate or streetwear brands do wrong 
He says, a lot of these streetwear brands, and when I say a lot, I mean like five or six, they immediately start putting out their heads out of their asses of these fashion houses. They're looking for clout. I'm looking at them shrink thinking, your brand has been around for two years, free max, and you're already trying to collaborate with some major fashion house. To me, that seems absurd. It's not paying. It's not the paying the dues thing. They just don't. They just don't have the eye visually. They don't understand it well enough. The reason I think it's a bad idea for a younger brands to collaborate with a larger brand, and I'm talking about the Margellas, Prada, or Gucci, it's difficult to work with a brand like that if your company is new. You're setting the bar really high for yourself. So after that collab happens, there's nowhere to go but down, basically. That's where these brands lose their perspective. They lose their direction. And then that's when you start to see them do weird, crazy shit and make bad decisions. This is very, very true, right? And again, something that's always kind of perplexed me. Because I remember when I was younger, again, it's always, you don't have context, right? You don't really understand things a lot when I was young. Because I, I did, I thought I understood everything. I thought I was a fucking expert of all experts. I thought I got straight away. I know a person got straight away. I was on the forums. I was posting stuff. I was buying all the new stuff. Everyone knew my name, blah, blah, blah. But I was an absolute idiot, right? And I used to wonder back then when I was an idiot or, you know, when I was less or when I was more of an idiot, I used to always wonder why is it when I was reading some interviews with some brand owners that say, oh, we had offer to do such and such collaboration, but we declined it. Right. And we did this one instead. Or we concentrated on that. I used to wonder, like, why wouldn't you take that collaboration? That's stupid. Right? You're leaving money on the table. It's a good opportunity to do to, you know, move into new uh, product spaces, blah, 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 blah. I never understood it. Then when I started to get more involved in the street, where I started to dive in a bit deeper in the history of stuff, I started to look at people like Hiroshi Fujiwara, right? The epitome of like, you know, um, really, really cultivating value behind his brand and behind his name. And most of that's been done because of the picky nature of which of, of how he chooses his product, right? His project, sorry. He's very picky in the projects he chooses. He's very picky about the things that he backs. Um, he's um, He doesn't talk too often. Just a very precise way of doing things, very calculated in everything that he does, right? But also, all the brand's uh, collaborations that he does make sense, right? They all kind of marry up to his lifestyle, whether it's Burton, whether it's Louis Vuitton, whether it's Goyard, whether it's um, Head Porter Plus, whether it's Double Taps, whether it's Louis Vuitton. They all match to his overall lifestyle and the things that can't kind of form he's going for. You know, the, the point is life that he's in at the moment, right? Now he's in some ultra, ultra rich dad shit, right? So you're not going to see any of the low ball kind of kind of ratio he was doing back in the day because everything now is going to function as an extension of his lifestyle. And I guess what I also liked about him was that he wasn't, you know, begging or going after the fashion clout. And I think that's something that's been upsetting with more brands that you notice, right? Especially over time, like, you know, the use of fashion models and their shoots and stuff and, you know, cozying up to fashion designers and um, wanting to be part of that whole conglomerate, which I get, I understand from if you're a streetwear dude. I've been to enough streetwear events, whether in galleries or store launches, to know that you know once you once you've done one store launch, once you've done one capsule collection launch thing with free booze, you've done them all right. Surrounded by the same dollars all the time, it's not exciting, it's not fun. So to suddenly get these fashion houses knocking at your door, asking you to do a collaboration for a t-shirt meeting all these new people who have a new and fresh interest in your brand because they've never seen that kind of business business model before. Like, oh my God, wow, you just, you make the products, then you announce it and you ship it straight away? Fuck, you know, that's awesome. You don't have to wait six months to get an item you saw six months ago? No. Do you know what I mean? Like, they were so shocked by that kind of thing. That's cool. But I think the piling up to the fashion brands, again, I've agreed with Brunetti, especially for an early brand, that's never made sense to me. I think nowadays, most brands do it because of brand visibility. You want to get yourself associated with the brand you also want to gain, uh, expand your reach but like you said i think that it does more harm than good because you can't you know if you go and collaborate with the margella you can't then go and collaborate with champion right it just doesn't make sense right um you can't then go and collaborate with feeler you can't then collaborate with some random iphone case maker right it doesn't it wouldn't feel the same and your brand wouldn't necessarily get it so sometimes saying no to that really lucrative opportunity especially in the beginning is probably the best thing to do especially because most of these people that work these companies stay there for life. They don't usually move on. It's gonna, it's gonna. If if if, if anything, it's going to increase your. It's gonna, it's going to increase your demand. People are gonna want to know who you are. Who's this dude that said no with these screen printed T-shirts? Right? They want, they're gonna want to get you again in five years, in ten years, and then by that time you'll be more than ready. You'd have. You'd be a lot more comfortable with your position. You have your feet under the table. You know what I mean? That would make more sense. I'd think so. Um, again, I'm not too sure about if that's right or not, but I think in general, if you're a younger brand, you probably would do you a big favor to kind of just steer off the collaborations 
uh, especially in the beginning and really kind of cultivate your own vision i think that's really important too if i had a brand i think that's what i would do right you kind of stir away from the collaboration especially in the beginning and just you know you might you might do some projects you might do with in collaboration with other institutions or whatever it may be but not brand collaboration to get yourself out there more or maybe with some friends that might make sense but the idea of going and chasing down Bape Supreme and Stushy to do a collaboration with you is not probably the best idea ever, I would say. Um, but again, what do I know? Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I think it continues here. It's a good little bit here. It says, wait, what continues here? It's, uh, everybody, the interview asks, how does a brand know when to make that leap? When is a brand ready? I don't know. Um, but I know that all the big fashion houses like YSL and Gucci are looking at streetwear. Big fashion brands have always looked at skateboarding and streetwear. Skateboarding has been u u uh, vulturized by big corporations and fashion houses forever, since the 80s. These fashion houses and even now advertising agencies look at skating because it's real. Everybody likes things that are real and legit, and that's why they look at us. And skaters have a sense of community. There's a very communal and very unified. The fashion industry is not like that. Everybody's at each other's throats, and it's very dishonest. You probably remember when they when they were looking at, at, at what punk rockers were doing. They are looking at a group of people that are rebellious unified and have a sense of community they always do that which is very very true and something i've always noticed um as well especially being in streetwear having been on on both sides of the of the screen right as a consumer and as a kind of person putting out the content and being a quote-unquote brand builder um i've noticed that um fashion really does try has really in disbelief about some of the uh business models or way uh, streetwear brands go about doing things whether it comes to marketing whether it comes to brand awareness whether it comes to content they just ignore they don't understand what's going on and i think a lot of the brands especially street brands owe themselves a real disservice when they kind of suck up because really the power balance is the other way around we're the ones that are in control we're the ones that are really setting the pace and dictating how retail is done how merchandising is done um uh e-commerce right um again photography advertising marketing social media we're kind of dictating that overall pace and flow and i just wish more brands would be um, cognitive or aware of that and would kind of steer the conversation more towards streetwear and less towards the fashion side of it um again just a great great little interview with everybody I really, can, really recommend you check it out i was scroll to the top actually what's it called it's called discussing the history of fucked and the current streetwear market with eric Brunetti, uh by ian mc mckenna ian mckenna on jenkin man link in the show if you guys check out if you feel that way inclined